Happy Thursday. Who is here? It is Thursday evening and I'm checking in, saying hi, calling this our Talk to Dr. Teresa Thursday. Let's see who's talking tonight. Let's see what everyone's up to. I'm gonna wait a little bit and see if anyone joins me. It is freezing. And I've got my little cup here, drinking some tea, ginger tea. My cup says, this is my happy hour. <laughs> How fun. The things that make me happy, I promise you all. <laughs> I just need a shirt that says that with a teacup on it and I'll be good. Well, it's 7.31. Let's see if we have any friends that are here. I'm gonna tag some friends. All righty. I tagged a few people. Let's see who joins. In the meantime, what's everyone doing? Hey, Regina. Happy Thursday. Yay. How are you? It is Dr. Teresa Wright. It's Thursday evening. It is freezing in the whole world, it feels like. I know it's not the whole world, but it feels like the whole world. Like I feel like my whole world is consumed <laughs> by the cold. And I just want to run away to someplace warm. So since I can't do that, Hey, Indy. <laughs> Since I can't do that, I'm drinking my ginger tea. <laughs> and um, I just had the best soup. Hubby made the best soup. He made the um, Olive Garden inspired soup Toscana. Hey, Dr. Hodon. So that soup, this tea, I'm starting to defrost a little bit. So... Since I've got a few people here, I just want to say happy Thursday again. I just wanted to come on and introduce myself. Hey, Dr. Cynthia, I am Dr. Teresa Wright. I help overwhelmed and overextended individuals to learn to prioritize themselves now. I do that through my writing, my speaking, and videos such as this. So follow me on all social media at Dr. Teresa Wright. That's D-R-T-E-R-E-S-A-W-R-I-G-H-T. Tell your friends, um, I just want to spend some time just educating and learning and laughing with some of my friends on Thursday evenings, and I find that this is a really good way to do that through social media. So again, for those of you who are just checking in, it's Dr. Teresa Wright. I'm a board-certified family medicine physician. I'm also a certified health coach, and I help overwhelmed, overextended individuals learn to prioritize themselves now. I do that through my writing, my speaking, and videos such as this one, so follow me on social media at Dr. Teresa Wright. That's D-R-T-E-R-E-S-A-W-R-I-G-H-T. So let's get started, guys. So every time, every Thursday, I struggle because I wanna make sure I talk about something that's relevant and beneficial and helpful. And of course, with the deep freeze that we're going through, I was tempted to talk about the weather, but that was just bringing me down. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. <laughs> that was just gonna bring me down, so I just thought, no, we're not gonna talk about the weather. So I wanted to share three times, yes, my fingers cooperated, three times when I move from fearful to fulfilled and hopefully give y'all a few tips to do the same. And I would like for y'all to engage me, hey Norma, and also share some times when you have moved from fearful to fulfilled and what that process looked like and what that mindset shift, mindset shift looked like and what that felt like. So. The first time for me um, that I remember specifically being very afraid of what the future held, but making a decision to move forward anyways, was when I decided to move to America. That's correct. Um, I was about 18. Well, actually, I just turned 18. And, you know, the thought was in the back of my mind for, for years before. I knew that was an option for me to move away and pursue a higher education in the United States. 
but I, I really didn't have a plan. We, my parents and I didn't, we never discussed the plan. I just knew that it was a possibility. And so right around my 18th birthday, um, you know, and maybe even a little bit before that, my dad, myself, and I talked to my mom about me transitioning to the United States. And I had no clue, like no clue. <laughs> I hadn't picked out a school to go to. I hadn't applied to anything, any colleges. I had no money saved up for college. I just didn't know what was gonna happen. Hey, Auntie Colleen, I just knew that it was the next best step for me. And so I was definitely afraid of what the future would look like. I had no idea. Um, and then on top of that, my, my younger sister, who was 14 at the time, came along with me and we, um, of course, stayed with family. And so that was the extent of the plan was to move to the United States and stay with family and get a job and figure it out and go to college. That was my plan. I gave myself one year to move and go to college and try to figure it out. And it was a frantic, fearful, stressful time in my life because I left all my awesome friends, my loving friends and family, and I moved to a place that was cold that I had never been to before. And yes, I had great family waiting for me and great support, um, but when you're moving and changing and growing, it is a process and it's uncomfortable and it doesn't feel good, especially when the temperatures are frigid. And so um, I had to process that and, and navigate that and, and figure out how to nav navigate things like the bus system and the student loan system and working full time and then working two jobs and going to classes and it was a lot. But even with all the stresses and the sleepless nights and the three buses, that's right, I took three buses to get from where I was staying off campus to school every morning and every evening. Even with all of that and all the palpitations, a heart racing because I could never catch the bus or if one bus was running late, then I would miss the other bus, and I'd miss the, the last bus. With all that heart racing, heart pounding, stress and fear came a sense of fulfillment and a sense of I'm walking in my purpose and a sense of everything's gonna be okay if I just get through this barrier. And so that's like the first thing that I had to figure out. And so that's tip number one, is just kinda take that first step. Take that first step. If you have an idea of what your life should look like, if, if you've had a word breathed into you, if you have a sense of what your future should look like, you've prayed about it, maybe you've gotten confirmation and it, it just scares you to life. Um, take that first step because behind that first step is the next scary step that could actually lead to something awesome. And every step that I took that scared me and caused my heart to beat extra fast and caused me to maybe miss a bus off or not have a perfect transition, ultimately led me to the person I am today. I learned so much about who I am. And so that is my first tip, and that's me sharing one of my first experiences as a young adult, um, moving from fearless to fulfilled. And let me be clear, I am not, uh, I'm sorry, moving from fearful to fulfilled. And let me be clear, I am not a fearless person. I'm actually, um, I probably have more worries and concerns than most people. And I tell people it's because I know too much, especially now that I'm in medicine and I've seen a lot of things that could happen to the human body when you are not careful or when life happens and how it ravishes you. Sometimes I tend to worry more than most people around me. And so this is not advice from someone who's living a fearless life, but there are moments when it just, we just know that in that moment, if we make a certain choice, our future can change for the better. And in that moment, I knew that. And so that was my first, the first time I did that. And it went well. Because we're here and we're talking about it. So, um, hey, let me wave to you guys. Hey, hey. So another time when I moved from fearful to fulfilled. Time number two. When I was an undergrad, there was a contest in my university in Connecticut. I went to school in Connecticut. And yes, I did move from the Caribbean to Connecticut. I don't know if I remember to say that before, but I did move from the Caribbean to Connecticut in August and the temperature went downhill from there. So yeah, I had to figure all that out. And I did miss the bus a lot of times in the snow, at night, in Connecticut. So yeah, <laughs> but, 
But that's a whole other story for another day. But moving on to number two, as I said before, when I was an undergrad, I entered a competition. Um, it was a writing competition where you, you wrote an essay and if your essay was chosen, you actually were chosen to go to Ghana, which is a country in Africa. And so I wrote this beautiful essay. I was really proud of it myself. Um, and I talked about Marcus Gavi and the Black Star Movement and how, um, you know, I really enjoyed and looked up to um, certain different people in the African diaspora for their contribution. And um, my essay, hey, Kenesha, my essay actually, believe it or not, won me a trip, all expenses paid by my university to Ghana with about 10 other students and two professors. It was one of the greatest things that ever happened to me in my life. This was back in the day, so I'm talking like 2013. And so I went this trip and I'm going to Africa and I don't know how I'm gonna do it because remember, I'm not a citizen of the United States. You know, I've got like my green card and, and all that, but you've gotta go to all these special clearances and you've get a, you have to get all sorts of shots and you've got to have your own little spending money and things like that you know and, and I mean I'm an international student technically and I'm trying to figure it out and my, my parents are scared because you know I've never gone anywhere that far before and they don't know anybody there and, and everyone is trying to tell me that maybe I should reconsider this trip because it just seemed a little scary to them and therefore if all the grown-ups around me are scared and nervous, then I'm scared and nervous. Like, what am I doing? Like, you know, yes, it's a free trip, but can I do this? Like, is this safe? Like, what's going on? I wanted to do it. I wanted to do it, and I knew that it was a trip of a lifetime, and I knew I was going to do it, but I got a little scared because everyone else was a little nervous. And then what really got me scared was whenever you're going on a big trip, especially a school-sponsored trip, um, you have to get trip insurance, and you have to get... You have to sign different paperwork saying that if something happens to you, you know, what what you want them to do with your body and, you know, all this stuff. Like, would you want them to ship you back? And filling out that paperwork was very fear-inducing because I started thinking about all the worst-case scenarios. Like, what if something bad happened on the plane and, and the plane didn't make it? Or what if something happened when I was there and I got sick and I couldn't get help? So, you know, in life, if you are a natural war reward, such as myself, um you can lose out and miss out on awesome opportunities if you talk yourself out of it. So yes, I was fearful, but I was so excited. And I knew that this was a life-changing, hey, Dr. Alexandria, Alexandra, sorry. I knew that it was a life-changing trip if I could just move past my fear. Hey, Nellie, and get on that plane. And let me tell you guys what, it was the best trip. I still talk about that tri this trip till today. And it's even like, I'm reminiscing more about it now because my friends, some of my best friends are in Nigeria right now, enjoying the awesome weather and the awesome people and the awesome food. And I am reliving some of my memories from my trip and just knowing that sometimes in life you have to grab these opportunities and you have to step out on faith and you have to do what you have to do. And so, oh, thank you, thank you, Nelly. <laughs> and so that's my tip number two is sometimes, when everyone around you says no, but you know in your heart it's a yes, you have to find a way to move past the fear and walk onto the plane, the train, the bus, into the classroom, into the boardroom, whatever your experience looks like, whatever you're supposed to be doing. You've got this divine appointment, you've got this favor and it scares the living lights out of you and it scares the people around you. But you know that's the next step. Sometimes you've just gotta do it, just do it. You just gotta move past the, the, the fear, the naysayers. Um, of course, if people love you and they're concerned, you wanna acknowledge the concern, you wanna be smart, you wanna be safe, you wanna do everything you can to, to make sure that you're making a good choice. But when all is said and done, yes, we only have this one life to live. So break through the, the fear and do what you have to do. You have, you have to live your life in a way that at the end of the day, you can look back and say, I did that and I don't regret it. And that's, that's, that trip for me was that moment. 
where I always think to myself, if I didn't get on that plane and I didn't have that experience, I would be a totally different person right now. My worldview has widened and I have so much more of the world to see and God knows I want to do it all, but one step at a time, baby steps. So that's time number two, when I move from fearful to fulfilled and I absolutely encourage you to do the same. So, so I give you two times, okay. <clears throat> Let me get some tea, cause y'all know I love my tea. See what I told y'all, my cup says this is my happy hour. For those of you who are wondering, it's ginger. It's ginger tea, one of my favorites. Time number three. So time number three. So I told you all about how I came to the United States and I didn't really have a plan and I didn't know what was happening and I just kind of did it anyways. Well, the same thing happened to me when I decided to be a doctor. So my whole life, my whole life, I was going to be a lawyer. Everybody knew it. Since I was an itty bitty thing, I had a mouth on me that would not stop talking. I challenged everyone, I said what was on my mind. I was just one of those kids that you wanted to be like, look girl, can you stop? Can you chill? Like you have no chill. Like, <laughs> like I was that little girl and I took myself super seriously. I mean, it was black and white, everything was just what it was. And my parents were like, yeah, she's gonna be a lawyer. My dad was like, yeah, she's gonna be a lawyer. Like I just grew up being told, you know what? You, you're just gonna do this the rest of your life. You're gonna just argue about everything with everybody. <laughs> you're, just, you're just gonna do that. And I really bought into it. Like, you know, I joined the debate team and I was really good at it. I traveled with the debate team. I, I really enjoyed it for career day. I dressed up as a lawyer and went to a legal office and worked. So I had the whole experience. I did pre-law classes in the Caribbean because I knew I was gonna be a lawyer. Like it was just what was gonna happen. And then I moved to the US and decided I didn't wanna be a lawyer because my whole life was changing and it just didn't feel like it fit anymore. I didn't know what it was going to be, but my environment changed, my surroundings changed, my family dynamic shifted because now I had new family and other family that I didn't grow up around that was now a part of my circle. So my worldview changed. And all of a sudden being a lawyer didn't fit. So I decided, hey Tamika, to think about the next hardest thing I could do that would make me anxious and nervous and get my breath caught in my throat and do that because I needed a little something extra in my life and who, who knows? So I decided to study um, biomolecular sciences. And then I decided, well, I'm doing that, so let me go to medical school. So that's how that all happened. And it's a longer story than that, but that's the condensed version. Hey, Dr. Mildred. So I wake up in sophomore year and I tell everyone, I'm gonna go to medical school. I don't have any background. I mean, first of all, I got a C in chemistry. So I'm not like the science whiz or anything. I'm not good at math. And so I'm not your math whiz. And I wake up and say, I'm gonna be a doctor. And everyone's like, yeah, that's not how that works yeah you can't really do that like you have to you know be planning this for years people raise up their kids for years planning to be doctors they do all sorts of courses and they do events and they do contests and you don't just wake up sophomore year and say you're going to be a doctor and i was like oh, i don't really know what else to tell you but that's the next step so i had a lot of folks looking at me which i get it just kind of confused like what is going on with this girl and i'm like yeah i'm gonna be a doctor and i was actually saying it but I don't think I really, really started to believe it yet because you don't just say that and believe it right away, right? And they're, they're, it comes out of your mouth and you surprise yourself. And then your brain has to kind of work on what your mouth is saying because you're like, ooh, I just put my foot in my mouth. Like, hey, Dr. Delicia, now I got to deliver. <laughs> so anyways, you know, I signed up for all the classes, you know, all the pre-med classes. And, and now I'm on the fast track because I'm a sophomore in college and I don't have any of the basics to do this. Because remember, I was going to be a lawyer. Hey, Dina. And so now I'm on the fast track. I'm taking three and four science classes and, um, you know, classes that are pre-med major classes in a semester. And I'm just stressed out and I'm fearful. And it's time to take the MCATs and I'm fearful. And it's time to apply to medical school and I'm fearful like everything I did was like filled with fear but I wanted to do it I felt like I was headed in the right direction I didn't know where all that came from and now I know that that was uh, that was not all me like you don't just wake up and say that you're gonna do something 
and follow through and fall on your face multiple times and still um, persevere without some some help and so when people ask me you know why I believe what I believe which is I am a Christian I believe in in God is because I know that I didn't do half the stuff that I've done by myself like I know that half the plans that I made didn't weren't fulfilled and the ones that I didn't make were the ones that actually came through so um, there's a whole lot of faith that came with me walking into my fulfillment and walking out of my fearfulness, if that makes sense. Anyways, long story short, um, I graduated from undergrad um, with a biomolecular sciences degree. And at graduation, the president of the university actually highlighted me in his president talk and said, she's gonna be a doctor. And I'm thinking, you said that at graduation. No, I really gotta get into medical school. <laughs> right, Dr. Lakeisha? I'm like, no, I really gotta go to medical school. You said it in front of the whole auditorium at undergrad graduation. Like it, it was in the newspaper, like that I was gonna go be a doctor. And I was like, crumb, this really has to happen, you know? And, and again, I wanted it to happen. I was working on it happening. But when, it's something about when someone says your whole, your whole plan out loud, when you don't have the faith to say it out loud yourself, when they blast it from the mountaintops, it gives you this supernatural strength and courage and fearlessness to like go after those dreams with a, a new determination. And so that happened, you know. Um, I took a summer and I did, so I did summer classes every summer anyways to like prepare for medical school. But the summer after graduation, I, I studied some more, I took the test, I applied to medical school. There was this new, dogged determination that I didn't have before and and I remember you know folks were like you don't need to do that you don't need to go to medical school why are you doing that let's just get a good science job you have a bachelor's in biomolecular sciences just get a science job you got to pay your student loans you got to help with your family you got to do this there was this long list of reasons why I shouldn't push myself past the point that I was pushing myself and I thought to myself I can't stop here because I don't feel like this is where I need to stop. I know that there's more that I'm supposed to do. And and this weird dream that just busted out of my mouth one day is pushing me forward. And so that was um, a scary time. I was filled with fear about the future. I had no idea what I was doing most days because remember, I'm the first medical doctor in my family. So it's not like I had like someone I could call up and ask them, what the next step was like every step was me talking to friends or talking to advisors or just making plans willy-nilly with no idea and some days I fell flat on my face and some days I didn't and I remember you know applying to medical school with my credit cards because I had no plan and no money <laughs> so I'm not saying that's a good idea I'm just saying fearless fearfulness and moving out of that into fulfillment, which is where I'm at right now with, with this career choice, is, is, is not a bad thing. And I mean, I hope that was a blessing to someone. I said a lot, but I kind of didn't. Gave you little snippets of my life, but I kind of didn't. So I hope it helped. I talked fast, so I hope that was um, okay. Um, but that last time, I have to say this because I would be remiss if I don't say this. When I was fearful and trying to walk in fulfillment, I had some really great friends that came alongside me. Some of my best girlfriends. You might see me shout them out on Facebook sometimes. You know, Mia, Tichelle, Kadeen. I had some great friends and I made some other great ones in medical school, but I had some great friends before medical school that whispered in my ear, was like, if you're going to, if you're going to be a doctor, we think you could do it. I had friends that wrote me checks and said, look girl, you want money to go to medical school? Here's a check. I believe in you, go make that happen. I have family that's, that came by and whispered in my ear and said, we don't know what you need, but we got you. So I say all that to say, I did it all, not by myself. I had friends, I had God, I definitely know that. I made friends that I love, I found my husband in the process, who I love. I mean, life is, life has been scary at times, but some of those scary, my scariest moments led to some of my biggest victories. I hope this was helpful. 
And that's your third tip is to make sure you surround your people, yourself with people who support you when you're walking into your fulfillment. And maybe it's with verbal confirmation. Maybe they'll write you a check. Maybe they'll hold your hand. Maybe they'll push you through the door. <laughs> Whatever it is, that's my tip number three is surround yourself with the right people because when all the world says no, and when you almost want to say you know yourself, you want to know your friends are there and your family is there to say yes for you. So that's it for me. Me and my tea, <laughs> which I'm drinking, are having a good old night. So um, let me know. Yes, Kenesha, it was such a blessing. And it's such a blessing to know you. You're part of that circle. <laughs> hey, Pam, let me wave to you. Thanks for joining. I hope this helped you guys. Um, again, sometimes I struggle about what to talk about. I don't always want to talk about myself and my journey, but you know, on a cold winter night when no one wants to talk about the weather anymore because we're over it, I thought this was a good topic. So let me know what you think and share your experiences also. Again, I'm Dr. Teresa Wright. I'm a board certified family medicine physician. I'm also a certified health coach. I help overwhelmed, overextended individuals learn to prioritize themselves now. I do this through my speaking, my writing, and videos such as this one. And you can follow me on all social media at Dr. Teresa Wright. That's D-R-T-E-R-E-S-A-W-R-I-G-H-T. Be blessed and have a great night.